last week on The Pulse. If you are a college football fan, you must make Tuscaloosa on a Saturday afternoon atop your wish list. It's a tough league, and if you don't have your A game, every game's a challenge. Pretty easy. This is a very proud university that played defense for years, watching this happen to them today. We've got to get the right pieces to the puzzle on the on the field and uh, and do a better job. I've said that, and you know, don't get that confused. That starts with me. Now, um, you know, we have done that. We've done that before, and we've been pretty good. And uh, so, there's nothing to lead me to believe that uh, we won't get back out of this thing and get back to where we were. You know, that's that's uh, uh, that's what this week's about. And so. Um, if, if we don't get anything done this, this week, it's going to be that. And, um, you know, to me, as you go back and you look at the film, tackling and third downs, there was the key to the game for us on defense. You know, a little bit of it's got to do with who we're playing, but we had way too many missed tackles in the first half, way too many. And we addressed that at halftime, and I felt like it got a little better uh, in the second half. Let's start off with Gabe over here on the right. Jake. What's the key to finding a running game? And if you could, what could that do to really open things up for you? Yeah, definitely. That's the first thing that we, that we emphasize of actually starting the games is establishing the run game. And, you know, I don't know if it's complacency or not. Um, you know, what I've seen over the past three weeks is, is we got hit in the mouth and we, we haven't really responded well to it. So, you know, it now goes down to the guys of just whether or not they're going to come back and fight or not. Uh, how would you describe this off week for your football team? You know, this off week, uh, we, we took time to really concentrate on us. You know, uh, after coming off of a situation like Alabama and, and as catastrophic as that was, you know, we had to look into uh, what we're doing, how we're doing it, uh, uh, who we're doing it with. So, uh, you know, we, we we really changed the schedule up on a bye week, probably practiced a little bit more, but uh, paid attention to, to the rest time, um, met with the players and, and uh, lifted and worked out on Monday, but then practiced pretty hard, uh, pretty aggressively Wednesday and Thursday. Came back Saturday morning, morning had another workout. So uh, really gave, some, gave us a chance to look at some uh, new players in new positions and, and get them worked out. And, uh, we're going to give a couple of new guys a, a chance this week to, to play a little better. The Pulse, Texas A&M football is presented by AT&T, building you a better network. If you can believe it, the Aggies would have to get bruised and battered a bit more in order to heal. It's Wednesday afternoon of the off week and a high intensity scrimmage is slated for Kyle Field. You guys know what I told you today, right? We're not gonna do anything wrong again. Everybody's gonna be on one page. We're gonna do everything right, you feel me? If you guys want me to lead, I'll lead, okay? From now on, we're gonna do everything right, you feel me? Hey, today, attack this practice. Don't come in here and try to find a way to get through it. Find a way to get better today, you understand? Sure. I want you guys to go out here today and show these coaches what time it is. Anybody that don't believe in any one of you guys out here, show these guys what time it is. And then the next time we're out in the stadium, we're not going to lose one more game here at this house, you understand? Yes, sir. I want you guys to go out and ball your ass out. Stop trying to be cool. Stop trying to look pretty. You know when you're going to look pretty? When we get that dub, 
Saturday night. On Saturday night, you feel me? Yes, right, bring it in here, guys. Let's go. Yes, hey, work hard on three. One, two, three. Work hard. Let's go. Effort and exertion meant everything in this practice. Energy was the highest requirement. This staff watched for want. Who would strive to get this team back to where it believed it belonged? Saw some intensity out on Cobb Field Wednesday, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. I think they got the point. Things that we've thought that we've been missing over the past uh, three, four weeks is energy and, and effort. So, you know, it, it was a very simple, you know, call sheet for me. It was just basically, uh, I want to see guys go out there and comp compete and play hard. Pleased with the kids' effort and their tackling and uh, swarming to the ball. And again, we got a chance to see some some guys that haven't played a whole whole bunch uh, in Cobb Field. Um, actually playing some football, which was good. We needed that, and, and as I said, it gave us an opportunity to, to, to uh, really, really try to put, make the point of, of what this program's built on. And, uh, the, you know, the areas that, that we talk about all the time about, you know, playing hard, you know, uh, playing smart and being physical, something we didn't do the last couple of weeks. And, and something that we're not going to accept as coaches, uh, anything less than that effort. And, and you know, that's what, that's what last week was about. This segment of The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by Bud Light, the perfect beer when you're up for whatever. Do you take the losses personally? <laughs> Switch it up. Let's go ahead. Let's go. Get those bodies flat like a ball. Good job. Anytime we take a take a loss, for me, it doesn't matter if it's one touchdown or you know a field goal. It it always bothers me. Um, and so the natural part of me, the football side of me, just wants to bring everybody in here and just kind of go after them. But the, but the smart football side of me says, hey, you know, you got to uh, use this week to build up for two weeks so that once, we're, once we play the next game in two weeks, that we explode again and we kind of got the bounce back in our step. Three days a week, the Aggies work out with Larry Jackson. The 6 a.m. group is always the largest as several travel squad and developmental players get in training before heading to classes. All 
my big boy. Yeah. Even in the middle of the season, Jackson is keeping a keen eye on the future. A younger player's drive in the early morning hours makes the difference in the push for playing time later on. These guys are really uh, got a lot of attitude. They got a lot of energy to them. And they're very athletic. Uh, Avery Genesee, you know, transfer. Uh, Coda Martin, um, you, know, you know, these guys, you know, Ledwick, some of these guys, they're, they're, they're you know, I just named out some linemen, but it's fun to watch these guys um, uh, kind of take this attitude on of, you know, who they want to be in the future for Texas A&M. Go, seven. Go, eight. Go, three, five. Go, three, six. It up. Let's go. Jackson's size and exterior can intimidate, but it doesn't compare to the passion he carries inside for the program he wants himself played for. Coach would always say, don't uh, expect them to do something that you haven't coached them to do. So um, I take it upon myself to make sure that when they come through these doors, that there's going to be more attitude and intensity, and they're going to give me more effort. And then we're going to carry that onto the field on, on Saturday. In here to get stronger. You're not in here just to work out. You're in here to get better. You're in here to get stronger, get better, and come out of here tougher. You're not gonna get tougher if you're just trying to get through it. And your teammates are not gonna get tougher if he's just trying to get through it. And if you let him do that, when he ends up on the field next to you, either he's not gonna block for you, he's not gonna catch the ball when he's supposed to, or he's not gonna make a tackle when he's supposed to. You understand? That's what happens during football games. That's what happened before. It's not gonna happen anymore. As you guys can see, we're not playing games anymore with this. You guys came here to play football, and we came here to coach you. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to coach you guys up. Hey, grind on three. Ready? One, two, three. Grind. grind. This segment of The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by Pepsi. Now is what we make it. Grab a Pepsi and some friends and get out there and live it. It's time to live for now. Texas A&M has always had a special place in its heart for the walk-on. Perhaps Kevin Sumlin does too. He was a walk-on at Purdue. That's why he relishes opportunities like the one he got before the season started. I need to have uh, Sam Miller, Connor McQueen, and Justin Bass see Gary Reynolds right after this meeting because you are now officially on scholarship. <laughs> We recruit a lot of high-profile players, but uh, you know there, there's there's always a special place in, in as me for me as a coach uh, for the guy who has come here, paid his own way, uh, just goes through the grind, and you know the ability to, to put them on scholarship is a big deal. Shock, disbelief. Uh, it's just it was all surreal. That whole that whole weekend was just. I couldn't grasp it. It took forever just to think that all the all the hard work and time that I put into it had finally paid off. A sense of relief. Uh, it's, I, it's just like all your dreams are coming true at once kind of thing. I mean, because it's like a day you've been praying for, you've been thinking about, you've been dreaming about, and to finally, I guess, it make it reality, it was just tremendous I guess I'm still obviously I say it every time I talk about it but I'm still speechless I think you can see by the reaction of the team it's the scholarship guys that are cheering for these guys I really think that was one of the best parts about it is because I mean they've been around the entire time that I have they've seen the work that not only they've put in but that I've put in it really means a lot and to see them express that their uh, their happiness for me and their excitement really uh, brings it all full circle
walk-ons and youngsters take center stage at the Aggie Bowl that concludes every Thursday game week practice. The Queen often has the spotlight during these competitions, calling the offensive plays. Oh, come on! What is that? Go, 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 go! Go, cut it up, cut it up! <laughs> Here we go, now, 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 now! As a young player, especially, just it's your time to shine. It's your, it's your one opportunity to get to go out during the week. Since you don't get to do it on Saturdays, it's, uh, it's your time to run our own offense, run our own defense, and uh, have some fun actually playing the game, going full speed live. Cat, 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 cat! Throw it deep! Oh, come on, just stay out there! From a quarterback standpoint, I like to let Connor and, and let Kenny and Kyle give their, their opinions on play calls so I can sit back there with Jordan Trailer, and Kobe Miller and, and help them operate the offense and, and how to communicate and execute it. So, you know, they do get a little exotic with some things at times. Every day, uh, Kyle, Kenny and I will meet upstairs about 15 minutes before our quarterback meeting and kind of go through the game plan and what we want to do. And then uh, Friday mornings before we have our uh, offensive meetings and our walkthrough, we'll watch the tape of the Aggie Bowl with, uh, with Jordan and uh, Kobe, so that's, that's usually pretty fun. It's fourth down, we gotta go for it. Come on, drop it on him, Jordan, drop it on him. He's there, he's there. Give it to him, give it to him. Got him, got him. Yeah. Give it to him, yes. Sad storm. Thank you. We welcome to the pod a man who proves soccer's pulse beats strongly deep in the heart of Texas and that kickers, football kickers, are people to Rodge Texas A&M Aggies kicker, Josh Lambeau. Howdy, how y'all doing? Pretty good, welcome. Josh, you, you're a former USA under 20 keeper. You're an FC Dallas first round MLS draft pick. You had a trial with Sheffield United. What on earth did you decide to become an SEC kicker? Well, um, FC Dallas kind of decided that for me when they didn't uh, re-sign my contract. I mean, honestly, I didn't even choose really to go to A&M. They more so chose me. Um, I had when I when I started to pursue uh, American football, they uh, I had a, a friend of my brother's who played in the NFL as a kicker, played in Wisconsin. Uh, his name is Taylor Melhoff. He taught me how to kick, uh, kick a football. He just made a couple of slight tweaks to my soccer swing. Being a goalie, I'm always hitting long balls with goal kicks and things like that. And um, made some pretty good, pretty good tapes. I sent them out to a bunch of schools, and uh, A&M was the one that responded. Josh, thank you so much uh, for coming on our show. Good luck with the rest of your season at Texas A&M. We'll be following your career. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. All right, bye. That was pretty cool. I was bragging to all my old soccer buddies this morning. I said, hey, what are you guys doing today? Oh, that's that's cool. Well, I'm getting interviewed by Men and Blazers. So, <laughs> you guys have a great day. Doing all the stuff that you believe in. Aggie Land, we see it's top season. I do it for the fam, that's the reason. I'm a rune, I'm a blood, I'm bleeding.